Cincinnati, Ken Anderson will be at quarterback. He came off the bench to rally them to victory a week ago at New Orleans. If Cincinnati wins and Pittsburgh loses at Los Angeles, they both wind up 8-8, eight and eight, and the title will belong to the Bengals. The Raiders have incentive. If they win today, they'll host the wild card game next week against Seattle. It's coming up next on NFL 84. NFL 84 is brought to you by the 1985 Jetta, the new affordable German road car from Volkswagen. By Curtis Mathis, a little more expensive, but worth it. And by Canon, so advanced, Canon is the world's leader in 35 millimeter photography. Hello again, everybody. I'm Bob Costas, and welcome to the final Sunday of the regular season on NFL 84. Bill McAtee, Ahmad Rashad, and Pete Axtom are here with me, and coming up on the pregame show, Bill talks with Ken Anderson, the Bengal All-Pro turned relief pitcher. Ahmad Rashad visits with Steeler quarterback Mark Malone and his two outstanding receivers, rookie Lewis Lips and the great veteran John Stallworth. They'll all have to be at the top of their games today if the Steelers are to upset the Raiders in Los Angeles. And this being the final Sunday of the regular season, it is time for Pete Axtom to hand out his dreaded consolation awards all around the league. Coaches and players waiting anxiously to see if their names will be called. Now, most of you will see a doubleheader today on NBC, and most of you will see Buffalo at Cincinnati as the first part of it. The standings again in the AFC Central. The Bengals have never been in first place all year long. In fact, they dropped their first five games before staging a fine comeback. If they should win today, however, and they are favored against Buffalo, and if the Steelers, who are the underdogs, lose to the Raiders, and both clubs wind up 8-8, eight and eight, the title belongs to the Bengals. The two teams split their regular season meetings, but the Bengals have a better record in the AFC Central, and that could prove to be the decisive factor. Now, those of you who don't see Buffalo at Cincinnati, you'll see either the Jets at Tampa Bay, the Colts at New England, Cleveland at Houston, simply because that's the way the cookie crumbles. Now, let's go out to the sites and get a preview of the games you'll be watching. the standings in the AFC Central Division. Pittsburgh with a one-game lead over Cincinnati. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones along with Bob Greasy, but a very simple equation, Bob, in the Central Division. Cincinnati today hosting Buffalo. If Cincinnati wins, and they are the favorite, and Pittsburgh loses to the Raiders later today, that means that Cincinnati is in the playoffs. Tell me about Buffalo. They won only two games this year. Well, they've won two of their last four, though, and they're playing a lot better than they did early on. They could be the spoiler here today. And what about Cincinnati? They had a poor start this year, 0-5. Well, they did, but they're coming on. They've won seven of their last ten. Kenny Anderson is really playing well. Here throwing to James Brooks, number 21 out of the backfield. Cincinnati likes to throw to their backs and their tight end. Collingsworth may not play today. We'll have to wait and see. And, of course, we'll have more on the Kenny Anderson story later on NFL 84. We'll be back with a ball game. It could be the decider right now. Let's go back to New York, NFL 84. And most of you will see the Steelers and the Raiders from Los Angeles as the second half of today's NBC doubleheader. As you may have heard, late last night a deal was worked out between the city of Philadelphia and Eagles owner Leonard Toes. So after a week of anxiety, it turns out that the Eagles will remain in Philadelphia after all. Now remember when you were a kid and you used to sit around with your buddies making up all kinds of ridiculous hypothetical situations? Like what would happen if Babe Ruth faced Sandy Koufax? Or more importantly, what if King Kong and Godzilla had a fight? Well, Pete Axtell, considering the situation in the NFC East, what if the Cardinals and the Redskins tie today? Bob, I think it's an act of great moral courage that you have chosen to share with America these moments from a twisted youth. <laughs> the answer to your question, however, is if these two teams tie, a great part of America who follow my five-star specials will be delighted because they'll have the Cardinals, plus six and a half. Redskins favored in the game, but NFC East teams are 2-11 and 11 after playing Dallas. Also, it's a poetic justice game. The only way the Giants can be kept out of the playoffs is the Skins or Miami must lose. Dolphins won't lose Monday night, therefore the Skins have to lose because if you've watched the Giants the last two weeks, you know they don't belong in the playoffs. Take the Cardinals, plus six and a half. Patriots 10 over the Colts in the long-awaited coaching debut of Hal Hunter for Indianapolis. <laughs> While you're trying to figure out who Hal is, pay attention to the fact that New England, in closing games with no incentive to win, 0-6 since 1976. Colts will get revenge for their 50-17 slaughter earlier in the year. Take the Colts plus 10. Bengals 13 and a half over the Bills. 
Bengals need it. My weatherman, Fast Eddie, reports it's a record high 67 degrees in Cincinnati. This means you can probably look for snow if Eddie's record is intact. <laughs> <laughs> The Bengals have not beaten an AFC East team at home by this margin since 1975. Like many other things at the holidays, this game is overpriced. Take Buffalo, plus 13 and a half. Best of the rest, Raiders minus six over the Steelers. Raiders with the biggest payroll in football will show again today why they're worth it. Raiders minus six. Lions are pick him over the Bears. Another long-awaited clash between John Witkowski of Columbia and Greg Landry of Arizona in the USFL. There'll be a lot of sacks in this game. I look for the Lions to win the battle of the sacks. Lions at pick em are the choice. Finally, the Packers are minus seven and a half over the Vikings. You might wonder, am I through picking on poor Les Steckel for this year? The answer is no. I have to give some awards out later in the show, and I'll get my last shot at him. But right now, I'm taking the Packers minus seven and a half. The Vikings might be the worst defense ever assembled in the history of professional sports. On top of that, this is what Ahmad Rashad calls a tape game. Ahmad, <laughs> would you care to explain that? Look, Pete, now at this point in the season, with a record like the record that they have, there's major arguments in the locker room. You know what they're about? Who was going to buy the tapes for the long ride home? <laughs> <laughs> Take the Packers minus seven and a half, and may the music be with you. <laughs> is that the end? <laughs> Well, I guess that means that we'll break away for a commercial message now. And when we come back, Bill McAtee will talk with Bengals quarterback Ken Anderson. Stay with us if you're so inclined. <laughs> Bill McAtee wasn't long ago that Ken Anderson was an all-pro quarterback and he had the Bengals in the Super Bowl, but now he's entered a different stage of his athletic career. Well, I think every player who's been in the league for a while probably goes through this period in his career. The Bengals have drafted their quarterback of the future in Boomer Esiason, but last week when Esiason didn't move the club, Sam Weiss didn't hesitate at all going with Kenny Anderson, and he was certainly effective. The odd thing about Kenny when you look back on his career is that without that Super Bowl season of 1981, Anderson probably wouldn't have gotten the recognition his statistics say deserve. Anderson, wide open is Collinsworth. Anderson to throw. Touchdown, M. L. Harris. I don't think that this team, with anybody else playing quarterback, would go to the Super Bowl that year. He had the most unbelievable year that anybody who's ever played quarterback has ever had. Of course, he won the passing title. He was the most valuable player of the league that year. And uh, it, was, it was just astounding to watch him. He made almost no errors throughout the entire year. It was just phenomenal to watch. And consistency has been Kenny Anderson's trademark throughout his nearly 14 years in the league. Among active quarterbacks who have thrown at least 1,000 passes, Anderson is the top-rated quarterback in the AFC. But he is a low-keyed individual whose approach to life and the game has kept him from the spotlight. I think in a certain sense it's uh, probably a product of my personality a little bit. Uh, as you can tell, I'm not the flashiest guy in the world. I don't have a lot to say a lot of times, and, and therefore uh, a lot of times you don't direct a lot of attention towards yourself. Publicity and, uh, and attention on myself is not something I really needed to, to thrive on, and so therefore it really hasn't bothered me that much. Kenny is one of those guys that you, there are a lot of stories, but there aren't any real knee slappers that you come up with and say, now let me tell you this one, this one will bury his reputation forever. Um, Kenny is a um, straight shooter for one thing. I, I know that on and off the field, he's that. While reputation may not put Ken Anderson in the company of the game's great quarterbacks, the statistics do. In addition to a knack for making the big play, during the strike season, he completed 70% of his passes. 60% for his career. And on the all-time completions list, he ranks third in the company of Fran Tarkenton and Johnny Unitas. But this has not been a typical Ken Anderson year. His interception percentage is up, and injuries have been a problem. I think it's been a kind of a frustrating one for me. Yeah, number one, because of injuries. Uh, you know, you play a couple games and you sit out. You play a couple and you sit out. And that, that hasn't been a lot of fun. So I was very fortunate the first part of my career uh, I was very relatively injury-free. I didn't miss many games for the first eight or nine years. I've taken a lot of hits in 14 years, and uh, sometimes it just takes its toll on your body. But when the Bengals had to win a week ago, it was Anderson who fired up the dormant Cincinnati offense. 
coming off the bench. He threw two touchdown passes in the third quarter, and the Bengals forced the Central Division race to Week 16. Obviously, our division is not one of the stronger ones in the league this year when, when you look at the records of the four teams uh, combined. Uh, as far as what we've done in the division, we're 5-1 and one in our division. So I, I think if we would happen to go in as division champs, uh, I think that would represent our division very well. Uh, as far as the 8-8 eight eight record goes, uh, it's not a great record, but uh, other teams have squeaked into the playoffs. If, if we happen to get lucky and, uh, and make it, uh, I won't feel bad about it at all. In spite of the fact that Kenny's probably headed for the Hall of Fame, you have to feel that next year Sam Weiss will want to begin building his offense around Boomer Esiason. Okay, if that happens, you think Anderson would seek a trade to another club where he could start, or could he remain as a backup and accept it? You know, Bob, he's got the kind of temperament, I think, where he would sacrifice his personal goals for the good of the team. I think you saw that a little bit this year. All right, Bill, thanks very much. Coming up next on NFL 84, Ahmad Rashad takes a look at the Pittsburgh Steelers a team that has a one-game lead and yet might find themselves later this afternoon with their backs to the wall. It's a curious situation, which we'll explain next on NFL 84. Here's the situation the Pittsburgh Steelers face today. They've lost three out of five. It may be necessary for them to beat the Raiders in Los Angeles in order to make the playoffs. That means beating the defending world champions, a team which they have not defeated since 1975. The Raiders have won their last six games with the Steelers, beating the Raiders on their home field and in a game where the Raiders also have incentive because a Raider victory today would give them home field advantage in the wild card game next week against the Seahawks. So Ahmad Rashad, Pittsburgh could really be up against it later on this afternoon. Bob, it's incredible that the once powerful Steelers are in this situation. Because when I think back of the Steelers, I think about the glory days in the 70s when they won all the Super Bowls and everything. And when I was in Pittsburgh last week, I ran into a guy, Rocky Blyer, you remember the name, a great running back. And we talked about the new look Steelers. And one of the things that we both agreed on, that even though they're going through a rebuilding situation, they still remained at the top of their division. Throughout the 70s, all-pro wide receiver John Stallworth was like the Rock of Gibraltar. It is now a new-look Steeler team. Gone are Terry Bradshaw and also the Steel Curtain. In the past, we could step on the field and, and uh, there was a, a certain uh, gloom that went on other people's faces. We always felt. We felt that uh, uh, we had a certain amount of respect in the league and, and that uh, teams were going to have to come and, and play very hard to beat us. Uh, now, uh, I think that respect has dwindled a little bit because of the changing of the guard, but I think we have good young talent. When speaking of young talent, the name that comes to mind is Lewis Lips, a most exciting receiver who also doubles as a league's leading punt returner. We've always emphasized the big play because, you know, it's always, it can always be a turning point. And, uh, you know, when we, the season first started, we, uh, we went deep a lot, and uh, it was pretty pretty successful. And, and uh, ever since then, you know, the, the quarterbacks have confidence in us, and, you know, they know if they throw it up up there deep that uh, we is going to get it or nobody's going to get it. Lewis is a phenomenal athlete. Uh, he, he's a threat anytime he touches the ball, and now he's gaining a lot of respect from opposing teams. Uh, teams are not able to load up on me as, as much as they done in the, in the early, early season. And Lewis is going to be one of the great ones in this league. He does so many things so well. He's quick, has great hand-eye coordination, uh, great leaping ability, and he's strong. And, and I'm healthy. So uh, our passing game now is more consistent, a lot more consistent than it was last year. One of the things that people don't realize is when you have two great receivers, there's some competition going on within that game. One guy goes out and makes a great play, and it makes the other guy want to go out and top that play. So that makes your offense even better. Oh, for sure, that that, that is right. But... One thing, too, I, I, we're always competing. It's something that Lynn and I used to do on the field. He came up with a big play, then I felt almost compelled to do the same. Uh, that's getting back. I'm getting that feeling back again, trying to get Lewis into that flow. And once we have that little competitiveness going on during the course of the game, uh, I think we're going to see a lot of big plays out of this offense. It's definitely a mutual admiration society between these two receivers, and rookie Lewis Lips takes full advantage of John Stallworth's experience. He's a leader on and off the field, and, and uh, he's helped me out a tremendous amount. And, and uh, you know, just having him out there, you know, that's, that's just like having a, another coach. Quarterback Mark Malone has spent most of his career as a backup, first to Terry Bradshaw, 
then to Cliff Stout, and he started this season as a backup to David Woodley. He's finally gotten his chance, and he's quickly developing into one of the league stars. The Steelers once again have a chance at postseason play, but in their way, their old nemesis, the Raiders. It's a win or lose situation. We control our own destiny. Uh, we lose the ball game. Cincinnati wins. We have an early Christmas. Uh, and, and one uh, in which we probably won't be able to buy as many presents <laughs> because the playoff money won't be there. You know, Mark Malone is an incredible story. He's one of the few quarterbacks in the National Football League that call their own plays. Now, that, that's amazing because nowadays you have quarterbacks that play their entire career and never call a play. That's why when you watch a game and you see the time running out and they're in the huddle and you see the quarterback get up and call timeout, the reason they do that is because they can't remember the last time that they called a play. Well, you'll see two quarterbacks then calling their own plays today, Steelers and Raiders, because that's the Al Davis and Tom Flores philosophy, let the quarterback call his own plays. That'll be definitely part of the matchup. John Stallworth told me that one of the main things that they can do with him and Lewis Lips is they can go to the quarterback, find a weakness, and be able to get to it right away. How confident were they this week? Obviously, they're a big underdog. They really are. Last year, when they played the Raiders at the end of the season, they felt like the season was going down. Now they feel like they're gaining momentum. And Mark Malone tells me that their attitude is that if they can win and win the division, they should go to the playoffs. They don't care what Cincinnati's doing. They don't want to back in. They should win in order to go into the playoffs. So they feel like they ought to be 9-7 and seven and win it outright in order to have some dignity about it. Well, they'd have some dignity, and they'd be able to buy a few more Christmas presents. They'd still go, even if they were 8-8, though, wouldn't they? They wouldn't decline the invitation. That's right. They get 0-0 zero zero when the playoff starts. All right. Coming up next, the league's scoundrels and ne'er-do-wells meet their fate as Pete Axthelm hands out his year-end awards. We'll be right back. As you know, at the end of each season, the NFL hands out a Most Valuable Player Award, a Coach of the Year citation, and they also designate an All-Pro Squad. You would think that would be enough awards. That's what you would think, but not Pete Axthelm. Here with my consolation prizes for 1984. The Silver Lining Award to the New York Jets, who awarded a game ball to defensive coach Joe Gardy and claimed that they had turned it around in last week's stirring victory. The Jets, who had lost six straight, were celebrating a tremendous four-point rout of 2-13 and 13 Buffalo. The foot-and-mouth citation was earned by Browns coach Marty Schottenheimer, who recently boasted that he would soon have the best kicking game in the NFL. That week, needing only a simple punt to beat the Bengals and save a playoff hope, the Browns got it blocked. Marty, these silver-toed devils need some fine-tuning. The most creative cliché award was one of the easiest to give. Frank Cush mixed metaphors and proverbs from across the centuries to describe a turning point in one Colts defeat as the camel that broke the monkey's back. Engraved copies of the standings are being mailed with compliments to the Eagles and Chiefs. These guys played hard right to the wire as if they didn't know they were eliminated. And that brings us to the flip side of that coin, the coveted run for the bus award. This is the prize for the guys who truly understand when a situation is hopeless and act accordingly. They are extremely good at packing luggage for quick postseason getaways. They wear large timepieces to count the minutes until the ordeal is over. They accelerate mainly to get out of bounds or onto the airport bus. This year's winners began training camp with a grueling boot camp. They have finished by yielding a mere 203 points in five games. Call it unconditional surrender and wave a white handkerchief at those rapidly retreating Minnesota Vikings. Vikings, there is a bright spot in all this. The Run for the Bus Award covers double mileage on your air, airline bonus program. Uh, we also happen to have an expert in this studio, a former mainstay of the Minnesota Vikings. Ahmad, I'd like your views on this club. Actually, you know, my father once told me that you only get what you pay for. So Mike Glenn has to share this award because he didn't pay for anything and he got nothing, especially on defense. I think it's good that at the end of a long, grueling regular season, somebody found something almost good to say about poor Les Steckel. Les, may the hat be with you. Bob? And evidently, the Run for the Bus Award <laughs> is a statuette of Ralph Cramden. <laughs> we'll be back at halftime, at which time the playoff picture should be coming into sharper focus. We'll have all the scores and highlights for you, so we'll see you a little bit later on.
WGRZ TV 2 Buffalo. From Riverfront Stadium, it's the Buffalo Bills versus the Cincinnati Bengals. Today's game is brought to you by Mazda and the full line of sophisticated Mazda products. By Michelob Light, you can have it all. And by the people of AT&T Communications, we're thinking about your business in ways you never thought of. Here are the standings in the AFC Central Division. The Pittsburgh Steelers with a one-game lead over the Cincinnati Bengals. But that's not the complete story. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Charlie Jones along with Bob Greasy. Due to the tie-breaking system in the National Football League, if Cincinnati wins today, if they defeat Buffalo, and should the Steelers lose to the Raiders later today in Los Angeles, that means that Cincinnati would move into the playoffs. And we have, Bob, gorgeous Southern California weather. <laughs> it's South Florida weather. What are you talking about? The quarterbacks love this type of weather, though, Charlie. December 16th in Cincinnati, you would expect a lot worse. But today, I think you're going to see a lot of offense. The defenses don't like it so much, but the quarterbacks are going to love it. Now let's go to the keys to the game. First for Buffalo. Well, I think for Buffalo, they have to be motivated. Kay Stevenson has got to get his team together. They're 2-13. and 13. They're coming on the road. They're playing their last game of the season. He's got to get them into this ball game, get them motivated to be the spoiler today for the Cincinnati Bengals. And what is the key for Cincinnati? Well, I think they need an early lead. They, they are going to be motivated. They've got an opportunity to get in the playoffs. They didn't have a very good start. They have the motivation. They need an early lead. If they can get an early lead, they may be able to take Buffalo right out of the ball game. And what is your quarterback quote today? Well, Charlie, Cincinnati has had a rough go. They started off 0-5. They finished the season 7-3. If they can win this ball game today and later on today the Pittsburgh Steelers will lose to the Raiders, that means they have an opportunity to win the division and get into the playoffs. So today for Cincinnati, it's a win and a wait. But first things first for Sam Weiss, the head coach of the Cincinnati Bengals, he has to win. Buffalo won the toss and they'll be receiving. And that means that Jim Breach will be kicking off for the Cincinnati Bengals. Van Williams and Donald Wilson are the deep backs for the bill. The sun is shining in Cincinnati. And here's Van Williams, drops the ball at the four, picks it up, adds to the 50. Leans across the 20 to the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. 19 yards on the return. Jimmy Turner making the tackle along with Guy Frazier. Here's a look at the offense. Dufect is the quarterback. The rookie running back, Greg Bell, above 1,000 yards. Booker Moore, Preston Denard, Byron Franklin, and the tight end is Tony Hunter. That offensive line of Ken Jones, Jim Richard, Will Grant, John Borchardt, and Joe Devlin. Officials spot the ball at the 23-yard line. Play action. Throwback screen, left side, tight end, Tony Hunter. Hunter to the 30, Hunter to the 40. Slipped as he made his cut, and he'll be down at the 45-yard line. A gain of 23 yards on the plate. Glenn Cameron was the first man there. He touched him down. Defensively, Eddie Edwards, Tim Crumry, Ross Browner for the Bengals. Jeff Shue, Ron Simpkins, Glenn Cameron, and he is bothered by a staff infection. Reggie Williams, the linebacker. Breeden, Horton, Kemp, and Jackson, the secondary for Cincinnati. They mark the ball at the Buffalo 46-yard line first down. Bills come out firing. Greg Bell. Cincinnati, 46-yard line. Jeff Shue with the tackle. Charlie, I think you're seeing in the first two plays the attitude of Kay Stevenson and the Buffalo Bills. They have nothing to lose. First two plays on a gorgeous day in Cincinnati pass plays. First, a tight end screen to Hunter. The second, a little, little uh, dump-off pass to Bell. They have nothing to hold back for. They're going to play as, as best they can. They're going to go out and try to get some momentum going for uh, next season. A gain of eight, second down and two. Cincinnati, 46-yard line, no score. Game just underway. 
Bell hit at the line of scrimmage. No gain. Greg Bell, number one draft choice. 1,042 yards rushing coming into the game. Glenn Cameron with the tackle along with Reggie Williams. Greg Bell leading all NFL rookies in rushing. Number 69 is Crumry in the middle of the uh, defensive line. You'll see him playing off of 73. Borchardt gets over there and makes a piece of the tackle, gives a little support. But the man that really made the play was Williams, number 57, who came into the backfield and stopped the running black back in his tracks. Reggie Williams, the leading tackler for Cincinnati. Rob Riddick checking into the offense. Pass is complete, 41-yard line. A gain of five yards and a first down for the Buffalo Bills. Defensively, Ron Simpkins bringing down Julius Dawkins. So the drive that started back at the Buffalo 23-yard line continues. Take a look at the numbers for Joe Dufek last week. He played very well in the first half. And then the Jets got on him a little bit by blitzing him. He was a little bit flustered. I'm sure we may see some of that later on by the Bengals. Byron Franklin wide to the right side. Throw goes to the other side to Preston Denard. And he steps out at the 27-yard line. Gain of 14 yards on the play. Ray Horton for the defense. And the Bills have cranked up their offense. Well, and, and they've, they've called some plays to really establish the confidence of, for Joe Dufek. They've called some safe plays, a little screen to open the ball game, a little short passes. They made some first downs. Dufek is beginning this game like he has the last two, and that is playing very well in the first half. He's completed four of four. 50 yards of this drive has been through the air. First down, Bengal 27-yard line. Second back is Bell. Fifth the tackle. Puts his shoulder down and picks up the first down. Right cornerback Ray Horton was there to hit him. Bell 5'10", 210 pounder out of Notre Dame. He was injured the last two years in college and there's a lot of surprises when Buffalo took him in the first round. Well, I, I think those, those surprises have been answered. I think any critic of that first round selection has been answered by the fact that he's gained over 1,000 yards this year and has caught a lot of passes coming out of the backfield. Gain of 11, 16 yard line of the Bengals. No score, opening drive. 11.46, time remaining first quarter. Bell closed off inside, jumps outside, still picks up a couple, maybe three yards on the play, and the marker is down. Look, Charlie, like Ken Jones, 72, jumped a little bit as we look at Joe Ferguson with his baseball cap on. And notice the shadows across the face. It is... In the upper 60s, lower 70s, a warm, beautiful day for mid-December in Cincinnati. Face mask, number 69, defense, five-yard penalty. It is not an automatic first down. It is second down. Jim Crumry called on the face mask. Here did Ken Jones, 72, jump, but I guess he was just... Uh, getting off on the snap count the way a good offensive lineman should. It is first down. It'll be first down and two following the penalty assessed from the spot of the foul. The line of scrimmage, the eight-yard line of the Bengals. Dufek throws high. He was throwing that one away. Denard would have been the intended receiver, but Cincinnati had four men in the secondary, and Cameron was putting pressure on Dufek. Good smart play by a young quarterback, a free agent from Yale in his second season, Joe Dufek, throwing the ball away. They had more defensive backs in the secondary in the end zone than uh, Dufek had receivers. Dufek, by the way, is the first former Yale player to start at quarterback in the National Football League. He should be smart enough, wouldn't you think? Uh, you would think so. <laughs> you would think so. Second and two. Here's Bell. And he is met and pushed back. He needed two yards for the first down. It will be close. Let's see where they mark the end of the play. 
Let's take another look. Tony Hunter, 87, is blocking on Williams, 57. You see so much tight ends receiving. Let's take a look at their blocking. Seems to get a pretty good standoff. And then he is right in the middle of the pile as the rest of the Bengals come over to stop him. Looks like he's going to be a little short. Mark it for a gain of a yard. It's going to be third down and one at the seven-yard line. Lynn Collins and Jerry Boyarski check into the defense for Cincinnati. Third down one. Short yardage defense. Hunter in motion. He's the lead blocker for Bell. Bell around the corner is hit. His momentum takes him out of bounds. Right at the six yard line, which is what he needed to pick up the first down. Robert Jackson, the free safety, is the man who hit it. It will be a first down for the Buffalo Bill. Booker Moore, number 34, watch his block on Horton, number 20. He cuts his legs out from under him. Bell has to go around him. It allows the pursuit for the Bengals to get there, but Bell makes the effort to get the first down. Good play. And if you noticed on the replay, as he was going out of bounds, it was not the position of the feet, the position of the football when he went out of bounds. The feet were behind the first down marker. The football was past it. Bell, 17 yards and five carries. Five-yard line. First down goal to go. Bell coming over the middle and just keeps going. Touchdown, Buffalo. Very impressive drive, opening drive by the Bills as they take the ball right down to the score on the uh, Bengals. Bengals defense has been playing pretty well. Watch 53 in the middle of your screen. Will Grant knocks Crumry on his back and then some good tough running to get into the end zone. 51 Richer escorts him into the end zone. And Greg Bell scores from five yards out for Bell. That is his seventh touchdown of the season. And Chuck Nelson will attempt the point after Matt Kofler is the holder. And tight end Mike Bramer is the snapper. The threesome involved in the extra point attempt. And it is good. 67 yards in 11 plays. And the Buffalo Bills have taken the early lead. And here it is. Greg Bell going in from five yards away. The opening drive. The Bengals will have to come from behind to keep their playoff hopes alive. 1,000 yard rushers for the Buffalo Bills and Greg Bell. 1,064 yards and scoring his seventh touchdown. You talked at the beginning of the football game about motivation for the Bills. At least their offense is motivated. I don't think there's any question that Kay Stevenson got this group ready to play. Stanford Jennings and Mike Martin are set to return the kickoff of Chuck Nelson. Jennings will field it five yards deep and he'll take the touchback so Cincinnati will go to work at their own 20 yard line first down with Ken Anderson at quarterback James Brooks and Charles Brooks and Charles Alexander the running back Ryder Curtis and Harris are the receivers there is the possibility that Collinsworth will be in there we'll look for him Anthony Munoz he has been sick uh, running a little flu in temperature the last couple of days the rookie Blados, it will be Collins with the start. Remington, Montoya, and Mike Wilson, that offensive line. Anderson opens with a play action fake. Wanted to go deep, comes underneath. Look, the intended receiver. Charlie, it's interesting that both teams open with a pass. You know, if there's any pressure in this ball game, it's on the Bengals because they are the ones that have some meaning for this ball game. They need to win to have a chance. Buffalo, they're just out having a good time, hoping to win because of their pride. Second down and ten. Buffalo leading by a score of seven and nothing. We're just over four minutes into the first period, and here's Brooks. The flag is down, and Brooks picks up about three yards, maybe four, but we'll have to check out the marker. Ben Williams makes the tackle for Buffalo. Offsides against the Bill. So Cincinnati will take the penalty. It'll be second down and five at the 25. Offside, defense. Defensive line, Number Ben Williams, Brooks Merlis, and Ken second Johnson. Down. The linebackers are Keating, Hazlitt, 
Eugene Marv and Daryl Talley. And in the secondary, Carpenter, Rome, Freeman, and Rod Cook. And for Cincinnati, Brooks has gone out, and Stanford Jennings is now in as a running back replacing him. Second down and five, Cincinnati at their own 25-yard line. Chris Collinsworth is in the lineup gives a big emotional lift not only to the players but also the fans Anderson with great protection has all kinds of time Collinsworth keeps coming straight across the field till he finds an opening Anderson sees him and then takes it upfield Collinsworth bothered by an ankle the last few weeks here's Brooks to the outside Plato the lead blocker out of bounds, 47 yard line of Buffalo. A gain of five yards on the play. Officials responded to the ball at the 48. Brian Carpenter was there for the defense. Let's check the scoreboard. Tampa Bay leading the New York Jets by a score of three to nothing. A 37 yard field goal. Detroit leading Chicago three to nothing. Eddie Murray, a 52 yard field goal. And Cleveland in front of Houston, seven to nothing. And here it is Buffalo seven and Cincinnati nothing. Second down and five. Buffalo 47 yard line. Here's Ken Anderson. Contact prior to the snap. Dave Remington took the blow. The question becomes was Fred Smurlis drawn offside? <laughs> you think. <laughs> Fred Smurlis in the middle of the screen. See if anybody on the offense moves anything. Didn't seem Eight to be like anybody defense. moved. Number 76. <laughs> Dave Remington, number 52, says that must be an easier way to get five yards. He's got to be checking the line. Who moved? Who, did anybody move? Did anybody move? Let me tell you what a quarterback can do. The two inside linebackers, uh, Marv and uh, Hazlitt, were coming up. He saw they were going to blitz, so he knew that they were all sitting on go. Changed the inflection of the voice a little bit and got him to come off sides. With the penalty, it is second down and about a half yard to go for the first down. Anderson to throw. In trouble. Got it away in time to Brooks for it to be incomplete. Are they going to rule in the grass? Grasp and control. Grasp and control. The first sack of the ball game. Chris Keating gets it. That is only, only the 26th sack of the year for the Bill. He was looking downfield, wanted to throw it downfield. As we get back to live action, what the Bengals are doing are going in a hurry up offense, Charlie. Trying, trying to keep some of the substitutions off of the field for the Buffalo Bills. Charles Alexander stopped by Steve Freeman. A hurry up offense, and Cincinnati will drop this into a drive at any given moment. The ball just outside the Buffalo 45 yard line, fourth down and just over three. Matt McAnally dropping back to kick, a 42.6 yard average. Donald Wilson is set for the return. Goes for the left corner. And he gets it. Two yard line. Pat McAnally, a 43 yard kick out at the two. When we come back, the Bills will have possession, and they lead 7 to nothing. Minutes, 47 seconds. That is the time remaining in the first quarter. Buffalo leading 7 nothing. Greg Bell opening drive, scoring from five yards out. Now the Bills on their own two-yard line. First down. Bell getting the call, and he'll pick up just a yard, maybe a little more. Let's call it second down and nine. In that kind of a running play, Bob, when he hands to Bell, he's starting from about five yards deep in the end zone. Isn't it better to hand off to a back a little closer to the offensive line? If any of the defensive linemen get any penetration into the backfield, you can have 
uh, safety uh, by being tackled in the end zone. It's better than handing the ball going across if the backs are split running east or west or sideways. But you, you need really to get out of that end zone. Second down nine, three yard line, defect to throw. As pressure goes deep one on one, and it is incomplete. Ray Horton had the coverage on Byron Franklin. Horton thought that he had been interfered with. That's good aggressive football on both sides of the center as we take another look. It, it was tripping, but it was as much Horton's fault as Franklin. I don't know if I don't know if there was any contact or not. We'll maybe take a look at from this angle and see. No, that's, I don't think you can call anything. No. That. What was happening? The defense was blitzing. The offense was going for a big play, so both teams were going aggressively in the situation. They're down nine, shotgun formation. Dupac Troy gets away. He was running out of the, out of time. He went to Mitchell Brooking. He was in the back edge of the end zone. Louis Breeden had to cover. Well, Dupac did the proper thing again. He knows he's he's in a two-point area. If he gets sacked in that area, he gives away two points. So he took a look, wasn't anything open, and threw it out of bounds. And that means fourth down and nine that John Kidd will be kicking to the number one punt returner in the National Football League, Mike Martin. Kidd with a 42.1 yard average. There's no win. He has had two blocks this year. Takes it to the 48-yard line. Martin to the 40. Pushes a blocker out in front of him. An official goes down. The ball carrier goes down. 45-yard kick. 23-yard return. up front for the Bengals runs into one of his own men now you'll see him take straight up up the field Gordon Wells the umpire in the middle of your screen there is no place oh. for him to go oh he got sandwiched but he's all right he's up moving around good field position for the Bengals just outside the Buffalo 15 yard line first down Buffalo leading seven nothing here's the reverse David Mercer yard line gain of three second down seven Ken Johnson with the tackle Washington leading St. Louis six nothing first quarter Eisman a touchdown pass to Monk Tampa Bay now leading the Jets to another 12 yard line of Buffalo Sam White the record is seven and eight their start oh and five but they have won seven of their last ten Anderson to throw. Blitz coming. It's picked up. In zone. Touchdown. Jim Brady. Steve Ryder to hold. Kazerski to snap. The threesome and foul. It's good. Well, you're seeing the two MVPs of this offense for the Bengals, Collinsworth and Anderson. They both have to play well for the Bengals to get anywhere. Anderson is going to look go to his right. Collinsworth is going to run straight down the field. Anderson fits it in between. 22 Freeman and 55 Hassel. Great throw. You look at it from the end zone, the protection that he's getting. You don't expect the receiver to go straight down the field in that area. We're tied at seven. 
That touchdown pass, Ken Anderson, uh, now tied with you, 14th place, all-time touchdown passes. Well, you know. The, the record's <laughs> tumbling, tumbling, yeah, tumbling this Moving year. further down the ladder <laughs> as, as he's getting Anderson in his 14th year, and they really need Anderson in the lineup. Yep. He's been hurt the last four or five weeks. He had a slight shoulder separation. They need him back, and they also need Collinsworth in that uh, lineup. Jim Breach kicking off. We're tied 7-7. The kickoff goes out of bounds. It'll be five yards. We'll bring it back and they'll kick again. You talked with Ken Anderson. He's getting to that uh, that time of his of career when kick. he's going to have to make some decisions. How much longer he wants to play? Is he going to physically be able to continue as a starting quarterback, or is it time to take a secondary role? Well, what he told me is he's had a tough year. He's had two or three different injuries, the latest being the left shoulder, which was slightly separated five weeks ago. He's going to sit down. He's going to sit down after the season is over with and evaluate it, talk to his family and his wife, and see exactly what he wants to do. I asked him if he would be willing to come back in a reserve role, similar to what a Don Strzok or Earl Morrow has done so many years for the Dolphins, and he said that's a possibility. He didn't know, though, whether or not the Bengals would want to pay him his salary to be a backup quarterback. It would be a nice insurance policy to have. Of course, they have Turk Schoenert, who has played well, and Boomer Esiason, the young quarterback who was their second-round draft choice. And we have the wave here in Cincinnati. Now, Bob and I were here about six weeks ago, and they've improved the wave. They've just been working on it. They're doing a little bit better. <laughs> Donald Wilson on the return. And he is stacked up at the 19-yard line. So Buffalo motivated in that opening drive. Around 10 yards on the return. They move 77 yards in 11 plays. Then, following the punt of Pat McAnally, two-yard line, they couldn't generate anything deep in their own end of the field. The punt, the excellent return by Mike Martin, setting up the touchdown I'll say one thing Charlie this crowd is really into it when that when when Buffalo took the opening drive and went down they were very quiet but when Cincinnati scored they had gotten into this ball game 18 yard line official spot the ball the, the crowd noise Buffalo. here taking Number the one. Buffalo offense out of the ball game, we've got a timeout and we've got a tie at 7 7 6 40. That is the time remaining. First quarter. Six minutes, 40 seconds. Time remaining. First quarter, ball game tied. Buffalo 7, Cincinnati 7. Once again, if Cincinnati wins and Pittsburgh loses later today in Los Angeles against the Raiders, then due to the tie breaking procedure, Cincinnati will be the champions of the Central Division. They will move to the playoffs. If they both lose, the Steelers will be the champion. Greg Bell, the ball carrier, from the ninth, from the 18-yard line to the 25, a gain of seven. Second down and three, and Jeff Shue makes the tackle. Greg Bell vastly improved as a receiver. He is the number three receiver on the team for the Buffalo Bills, and also has improved his pass blocking. Exactly, Charlie. Early on in the year, their problem was picking up the linebackers blitzing and then also running his routes out of the backfield. Of course, he was trying to replace Joe Cripps, who was a master at coming out of the backfield. Second down and three, 25 yard line. Fake on a pitch against to the up back Booker Moore, and Booker will lose a yard. He was met by Ross Browner. It'll be third down and four. Ross Browner. Number 79 steps to his inside and runs around the block. See some of the action going up with Hunter, 87. He's got his hands oh. full. <laughs> There's a lot of action. See, the people think that the tight ends just run down the field and catch the oh. balls, but they don't see him in their block, and Hunter is a pretty good blocker. Cincinnati defensively with a dime package that is six men in the secondary, guarding against the pass, Dupac shotgun formation, third down and four. Over the middle, it is high, pull down, Rob Riddick. Riddick, first down, 40-yard line. It leans forward close to the 41-yard line. Riddick backing up Greg Bell. He is in there as an extra receiver out of the backfield and passing down. He's a situation player. This is a little option. He comes out of the backfield and has an option to break to the inside or out. You saw the big opening in the middle. He saw it. Dufek saw it. 
He knew he was going to the middle, a big first down for the Bills. A pickup of 17 yards on the play to the 41 yard line, Buffalo in their own territory. The opening drive they came out throwing. Why did they not st stay with that motif? Well, I think they're mixing it up pretty well, but you can't, you got to get into some things. They might have loosen them up a little bit. The reverse. Mike Mosley, and he's in trouble, and he throws off of the reverse, and it ends up an exciting incompletion. Buffalo is pulling out every page of the playbook. Well, I think they're going back and they're seeing what plays they haven't run. Yeah, I think you're but right. seriously, Charlie, <laughs> uh, getting back to what we said, they have nothing to lose. They're going to go out and give it their best shot. They're going to run these plays. Obviously, they've seen something in the film study this week. Kay Stevenson, just to think that these plays will be successful and they're going to run them. Second down and 10 Buffalo, 41 yard line. Their own territory, four minutes, 20 seconds, time remaining. We're in the first quarter and the score Buffalo seven and Cincinnati seven. On the draw to Bell and he is wrapped up but still hit at the 39 yard line but still manages to salvage a yard to the 40 so it'll be third down and 11. Tim Krimry was the first man to get to him for the Cincinnati Bengals. You got to give Crumry a lot of credit there. You know, he was the high school wrestling champion in Wisconsin, so he kind of knows how to handle a center one on one. A little earlier, we showed you where Grant handled him on the touchdown run by Greg Bell. This time, he got the best of it and made the play in the backfield. And Tim, you got to tuck that shirt in. <laughs> got to look neat. He's a wrestler. He's not going to look neat. <laughs> You're right. Third down, 11. Shot confirmation. Goes deep. Knocked away. Mitchell Brookins, the intended receiver, Lewis Breeden, number 34 for the defense. And that means it will be fourth down and 11 as we take another look. Brookins, of course, is the speedster. speedster. He'll be at the bottom left of your screen coming down. You'll see he has one-on-one -on -one coverage. All the other defensive backs are covering them. He has single coverage. Dufek throws it to the right person, just doesn't get it out there quite far enough and close enough to the sideline. But good coverage by Breeden. Good job just to break it up. Breeden had his eyes on intercepting that one. So John Kidd will be kicking to the number one punt returner in the NFL, Mike Martin, off the side of his foot. And that means that John Simmons, who drops back, picks it up and goes out of bounds. They want to keep that football away from Mike Martin. We've got a timeout and the score is tied 7-7. 35-yard kick, six-yard return next weekend. The Georgia Bulldogs, Florida State Seminoles, they'll be playing on NBC in the Florida Citrus Bowl. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy. Three minutes, 19 seconds. That is the time remaining. We're in the first quarter in a tie ball game at Riverfront Stadium, Buffalo 7 and Cincinnati 7. Anderson handing off to Charles Alexander. 36 yard line. He picks up four yards on the play. And it will be second down and six. And a Buffalo player is injured. So an injury timeout has been called. In case you joined us late, we'll be talking about this throughout the ball game because a lot of people join the telecast as it goes. A Cincinnati victory and a Pittsburgh loss would mean that Cincinnati is in the playoffs. So we have a lot to be decided today, both here and in Los Angeles. 52, Chris Keating was the injured player. It looked, Charlie, like he just jammed his neck or jammed his head. It may have got a little pinched nerve or something, but he seems to be all right on the sideline. And Stan David, the rookie taken in the seventh round of the draft from Texas Tech, replaces him. Second down and six. Anderson fires. Tip. It is complete to Brook. <laughs> Buffalo 49 yard line, gain of 15. First down. Ryan Carpenter with the tackle. In motion by Brooks out to the two wide receivers. Now that they've established Chris Collinsworth in this ball game, he's already caught a touchdown and two passes. Now they're using him a little bit as a decoy. That time everybody went with Collinsworth, nobody went with Brooks. Good play on first down. 
Brooks comes out. Stanford Jennings is in. Mike Martin is in as a wide receiver. First down, Buffalo 49 yard line. The pitch is to Jennings. 40 yard line. Gain of nine. Charles Rose makes the tackle. Second down and one. Jennings, the rookie out of Furman. Taken in the third round of the draft. Many surprised that he was taken that late. They thought that he would go in the first round. Well, he's a good ball player, and he's played more and more as the season has progressed. He was injured a little bit early on, but the Bengals like to throw to their backs, and he is a good receiver. Larry Kinnebrew comes in, and that is the reaction from the crowd. Brew, Brew, second down and one, short yardage special. He has scored nine touchdowns. with the tackle Buffalo Bill it's really amazing to me how much Kennebrew looks like a man who used to play here Pete Johnson and moved on Big Pete and little brew I don't think he's too little though maybe he is when you put him up next to it Pete. 6 1 listed at 252 probably 268 went as high as 281 during the season and Cincinnati calls for a timeout so Buffalo and Cincinnati have each taken a timeout here in the first quarter and we have 51 seconds left to go in this period. We're tied 7 7 will be back to Riverfront Stadium in just a moment for the Cincinnati Bengals ML Harris Rodney Holman and Don Kern three tight ends are in Mike Martin is in as a wide receiver and Larry Kennebrew is the running back Ken Anderson the quarterback first down Buffalo 35 yard line. Kennebrew. And the Brew has two to the 33. It'll be second down and eight. Beat who? We got the Brew. Just talking about. <laughs> they are big. They're both big, <laughs> large. Very well, we, large. We've got another one here, too. Speedy Neal on the Buffalo side. That's uh, <laughs> Speedy 6-2, listed at 254. He, he can sit at the same training table with those two. <laughs> yeah. Second down and eight. Charles Alexander comes in. Kennebrew comes out. Jennings showing motion. Anderson's pass is complete to Stanford Jennings, and he is dropped in his tracks by Joe Azelby. Azelby is in for Haslett, who is out for the time being. Number 50 to be dropping straight back into his own coverage, as you'll see, looking for anything to happen in front of him. Buffalo playing a lot of zones. Trying to take away the deep passes. The ball at the 28-yard line. A gain of five. It will be third down and three when we come back to start the second quarter. The first is complete, and we're tied at seven. It's a big quarter statistics as even as the score. Greg Bell, touchdown, five yards out for Buffalo. Anderson to Collins, we're 12 yards away. Tied at seven. Third down and three, 28-yard line of the bill. Anderson to throw. Wanted to go deep, goes underneath the covers of Collinsworth. One yard line. 27 yards on the floor. And Collinsworth is down. Charles Rome, who celebrates his 30th birthday today, saves the touchdown. Collinsworth has been bothered by an ankle injury, but this time he was reaching for his knee. Well, he was reaching below his knee, Charlie. It looked like his lower leg or his ankle, and it looks like he is in pain, but he was really trying to get to the end zone just to show you the great effort that he was trying to make, get in there and score the touchdown. He has three receptions, 62 yards total, and he has scored that touchdown from 12 yards out. Take a look. Buffalo was blitzing, therefore not many people in the center of the field. He catches the ball. Let's see if we can see where he gets messed up. Right there, the uh, Rome's 26 comes down on his ankle, it looks like. He's just going to run a little pattern. He's going to let the inside receiver clear right there and then come to the inside, takes the ball and gets up field. But I think Rome's really rolled over on his ankle. Right, right there. Right there. 
We're tied 7-7, but the Bengals are threatening. We've got a timeout, and we'll be back in just a moment. Collinsworth <laughs> limping off of the field. Standing ovation, Charles Alexander, Larry Kinnebrew are the running backs. First down goal to go, one yard line to break the tie. He does not go in. Fred Smurless was there to stop him. Today's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Minolta, makers of the high-performance program camera X700, only from the minds of Minolta. And by the STP Corporation, on the world's racetracks, on the world's roads, depend on STP, your car care company. Kinnebrew leaning in, and he leaves far enough. in Cincinnati about it. That was just great second effort on the part of Kennebrew scoring his ninth touchdown of the season. A 68-yard touchdown drive to put Cincinnati in front of Buffalo. 13-7 extra points still to come. Kenny Anderson has completed five of six, including his last five in the row. 83 yards and a touchdown. Jim Breach to attempt the point after. is good and the Bengals break the tie it is Cincinnati 14 Buffalo 7 and here is Larry Kinnebrew scoring the touchdown with 1406 left to go in the first half the left ankle attended to we just picked up a bit of the conversation said take a rest doctor right there looking at him said take a rest Collinsworth may be playing his last game in front of the home fans in Cincinnati Jim Breach kicking off. Van Williams. It goes to the back of the end zone, and Buffalo will bring it out to the 20-yard line. You know, Charlie Collinsworth is one of the most popular players, not only on the Bengals, but ever to come through Cincinnati. They compare him with Pete Rose in the 60s and Johnny Bench in the 70s, Chris Collinsworth in the 80s, as far as the, the, the love relationship that he has in this town with these fans. And this could be his last ball game. He has signed a contract with the USFL and may be going uh, over there. So this may be Collinsworth's last game here in the Riverfront Stadium. And that big play, the 27-yard pass where he was injured at the end of it, faced Collins with over the 1,000-yard mark for the season. Now let's see what Buffalo can do. Maybe get some momentum back. Here's Greg Bell from the 20 to the 25-yard line. Gain of five. It'll be second down and five for the Buffalo Bills. Lynn Cameron, who has been bothered this week with a staff infection of the knee, not even know if he would shoot up. He started the ball game. He makes the tackle along with a strong safety. Bobby Kemp really surprised that he's in there too Charlie uh, you know a staff infection usually is pretty serious obviously they have it under control he was in the hospital the last two nights that happened to me one time I went in I was uh, had the flu at a Saturday practice went in never thought I'd play the ball game they gave me a little IV came out the next day and threw three touchdowns I want to do that every Saturday every night Saturday night I'll go to the hospital get the IV and throw for three they spotted the 26 so it's second down and four and Bell gets the call again. 32 yard line. He picks up six in the first down. Tim Kremry and Jeff Shue team up for the Bengal defense. Bell has really had a great year. We said earlier he's over a thousand yards. Uh, uh, is an alternate for the Pro Bowl. He was, uh, Pro Bowl is voted by the coaches and the players around the league. So when you get that kind of recognition from your peers, you know you must be playing pretty well. John Simmons replaces Lewis Breeden in the secondary for Cincinnati. First down, Buffalo at their own 32-yard line. Bengals lead, 14-7, swing right side. This is Bell. Bell trying to slip away from John Simmons, who just came into the ballgame. And he'll pick up the first down at the 44-yard line. 
for a gain of 12 yards on the play and a first down for Buffalo. My impression is that Buffalo has more momentum throwing than they do running. Well, of course they're going to get they're going to get more yardage that way. The thing coming into the ball game that Cincinnati was afraid of was Greg Bell. Not only as a running but also receiving because we've said he's not that great a receiver but on a little swing pass like that they just get the ball out behind the line of scrimmage and then he can pick up some yardage but Cincinnati defensively is a very good defense they played very good the last seven or eight ball games and this is a tough test for Buffalo first down for the Bills their own 44 yard line trailing in the ball game 14 seven Dupec has time throws under the tight end catches it at the 45 Struggles back to that point. John Simmons was there. It ends up as a gain of one. Glenn Cameron also had a piece of it. It'll be second down and nine as Washington leading St. Louis in the second quarter by a score of 13 to nothing. Tampa Bay out in front of the Jets, 17 to nothing, second quarter. Chicago now in front of Detroit, seven to three. New England, Easton on down the road. 10 to nothing. They have the lead. Cleveland by three over Houston. You knew I would get that in. Uh, Green Bay shutting out Minnesota 17 to nothing. Here it is Cincinnati 14, Buffalo 7. The Bills' record is 2 and 13, but their two wins have come in the last four games. The big one was over the Dallas Cowboys. Pass over the middle, complete to Booker Moore. And Glenn Cameron brings him down. To spot the ball at the 50 yard line. Ross Browner was putting the pressure on the quarterback. Gain of five, third down and four. Cameron dropping back into zone, a former number one draft choice. One of the real leaders on this ball club. They need him in there. Makes a good play on Moore. I have a report on Chris Collinsworth, a twisted ankle. He will not play anymore in the first half. They will check at halftime to see if he can play in the second half. Six in the secondary for Cincinnati. Third down four. Dufek against a four-man rush pass is complete. Not enough for the first down. Franklin caught it and he was dropped by Bobby Kim. Ross Browner was trying to put the pressure on Joe Dufek. Byron Franklin pulled it in. It'll be fourth down and the Bills will be kicking. Bobby Kemp called the enforcer. All of the defensive backs for the Bengals are good hitters. One of the things they have always been able to do is stick the defense, stick the offensive man when he's in the secondary and try to intimidate him. Mike Martin is set for the return. John Gibbs taken at the 10 to the 20. 16 yards on the return. That is above his average, a 38 yard spot. Chris Keating makes the tackle. We've got a timeout with 10.37 left to go in the first half, and Cincinnati leads Buffalo by seven points. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy. Steve Kreider has replaced Chris Collinsworth as a wide receiver. That ankle that he is bothered with, that he has injured the ball game, the same one he's had trouble with the last few weeks. Pass over the middle is complete to the tight end ML Harris. And Harris picks up a quick 14 to the 40-yard line in the first down. Jim Hazlitt makes the tackle. Now, the offense of Cincinnati without Collinsworth, somebody's got to pick up the slack. Will it be the tight end? Will it be a uh, writer? Or will it be one of the backs coming out of the backfield? I think you just saw it right there, Charlie. He's going to go to his tight ends. ML Harris, the second leading receiver on the team, and then the backs are the third, fourth, and fifth, so you can expect him to go to his inside receivers a lot more. First down, Cincinnati. We'll fake the pitch out and a trap inside James Brooks from the 40 to the 44 yard line. It'll be second down and six. Cincinnati in their own territory. Daryl Talley is the man who brought him down. As we pause briefly for station identification, this is the NBC Television Network. This is WGRZ TV2 Buffalo. This is Charlie Jones, Bob Greasy. Just over nine and a half minutes left to go in the first half here at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati, and the Bengals are out in front of Buffalo by a score of 14 to 7. Kenny Anderson blitzes on, drops it off to Brooks. And Brooks picks up the first down. He needed six, he got seven. 
And a flag is dropped. The play went to the Buffalo 49-yard line. Charles Rose makes the tackle. It's going to be on 59 David for uh, uh, handling the quarterback. Unnecessary roughness on the passer. Number 59 on the defense. First down. Stan David will be coming from the right side of your screen. Hits him up high. I think that's probably what they called, Charlie, hitting up around the helmet, as we'll see the, the hit there by uh, Rome's. They're trying to take the, the, uh, the aggressiveness away from the quarterback's head and shoulders. It's all right to hit him, but they want to hit him below the net. So the penalty takes the ball to the 34-yard line. Anderson fires over the middle and is juggled incomplete at the 15-yard line. David Burser, the intended receiver, the pass was a little high, and Rod Cush was there for Buffalo. Prior to that pass, Anderson had hit his last seven in a row. Well, he should have hit that one, too. David Burser just dropping the ball on him. David Burser is one of the receivers that needs to come through for the Cincinnati Bengals. They have Collingsworth, as we'll take another look. The ball is thrown over the linebacker, but Verser needs to be able to come into his own. And I think with Sam White being here, Sam had been out in San Francisco and really brought along Dwight Clark and Joe Montana. He's a good teacher, and I think Verser is going to come along in his play. Second down and 10, 34-yard line. Anderson passes complete for 30-yard line. Stanford Jennings then picks up five more to the 25. Chris Keating is the man who brought him down. It is very close to the first down marker. Well, they're going to mark it back, so it'll be third down and still a yard to go for the first down. Good look at Sam White, who is really a smart player. He's, he's a good player. In fact, he was on the Buffalo roster at one time as a quarterback, but he's a very good teacher of wide receivers and a good teacher of quarterbacks and will do big things here for these young receivers and of course was the reserve quarterback here in Cincinnati in 1907 1970 first down for the Bengals in 1970 let me think 1970 because he's not that old Cincinnati opened with a record of one in six and they made the playoff and he was the rack back at quarterback to Virgil Carter they lost to uh, to the Colts, I believe, by score 17 to nothing on December the 26th. 22 yard line. First down. And this year, of course, Cincinnati starts 0 and 5. Anderson, lots of time, drops it up. Pass is complete to Stanford Jennings. Six yard line. First down, goal to go. A gain of 16. Officials conference motion called against the Bengals. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Offense. Two men moving. First time. There's a look at Boomer Sizen in the cap and the uh, the white hair, but he has the ability. The he has the hair. future. The blonde, the blonde hair. hair. I have white you know, hair. Tentative about that blonde, yeah. blonde and white. <laughs> he has the ability, and he has the he is the future for this ball club. Right now, Kenny Anderson has the experience, and that's what you're seeing. He is moving this ball club right down the field. First down, 15, 27-yard line of Buffalo. A little play action tight. Pass is complete. Mike Martin. Martin goes out just shy of the 10-yard line. Darrell Talley was there for the defense, and it'll be a first down. You're seeing the future right here, the Bengals, in Mike Martin and David Verser, two young receivers with Collinsworth going. Isaac Curtis has been, had his better years, I believe, and there's some talk around here that he may retire after this season. So these two young receivers, wide receivers of the future for the Cincinnati Bengals. At the Buffalo 11-yard line, seven and a half minutes left to go, second quarter. Cincinnati leading 14 to 7. Anderson rolls, throws, passes complete. Coleman diving for the end zone. Touchdown. The Rod 
Randy Holman. That is his first touchdown of the season. They're doing it with their passing game, Charlie. A lot of first down passes. Sam White on the sideline calling the plays. Chris Collinsworth being uh, put onto the, uh, the vehicle to be taken into the locker room. And Jim Breach to attempt the point after. It's good. Cincinnati leading Buffalo now by 14, 21-7. Let's look again, Bob. The play action right here. Good throw. Now it's just a matter of attitude. Who wants it more? Push 42 is trying to hold him out. Here it is. Anderson to Rodney Holman. That is Holman's 20th reception of the year. And as I mentioned, his first touchdown of the season. Your friendly Bengal tiger. Is that a Bengal tiger? You bet. <laughs> An old one, you can tell from the hair. Right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a white-haired Bengal tiger. <laughs> Seven minutes and 24 seconds. That is the time remaining in the second quarter. It's kind of sad right there, Charlie, yeah. because this, like I said, may be the last time for Kirst Collinsworth in that uniform in this stadium. Very, very well liked. Very, very well respected athlete in this town. One of the most popular athletes in the same vein as Johnny Bench and Pete Rose. Van Williams and Donald Wilson set for the return. It'll be down in the end zone by Donald Wilson. So Buffalo will have the ball at their own 20 yard line first down. Charlie, I think this is a crucial time in the ball game for the for the Bills if they're going to stay in this ball game. He's the top of the show. We said one of the key factors for the Bengals was to get an early lead and that could do uh, bad things damaging things as we look at the scoring drive to the Bills this is their last game they're on the road they've had a up and down season a very frustrating season some of them could say well we're going to lose we don't have anything to gain by this the Bengals do this is a really a gut check right now for for Kay Stevenson and his team to affect the throw for the Bills Pass is complete on the comeback pattern, almost intercepted. Mitchell Brookins is the man who caught it, but he he literally had to take it out of the arms of, I believe it was Ray Horton, and then Bobby Kemp made the tackle. I think that was Reggie Williams, uh, Charlie, that 57, who almost, he looked like he was waiting for the ball to come You're to right. him right here, yep. and then Brookins comes back. If he hadn't have come back, it would have been an interception. <laughs> As we see Reggie going to the ground, in frustration because I had that one I should have had it Joe Dufek has completed 10 of 14 and he has thrown to completed passes to eight different receivers he's up 95 yards in the air last one a gain of eight second down and two play action passes complete coming off of the play action to Greg Bell and he'll pick up the first down Reggie Williams makes the tackle Gain of six yards to the 34-yard line. First down for Buffalo. Bills need a big play. Well, they need a big play or they need a big drive. They may need a bunch of medium-sized plays. They need to establish the fact that they're in the ball game, get the momentum back, either by a big play or taking it down and making a good drive. Buffalo has run 27 offensive plays, and Bell has now 28. And Bell has been involved in 15 of them, either rushing or receiving. This time he goes to the 37-yard line, picks up three, so it'll be second down and seven. Eddie Edwards, the first man to get to him for Cincinnati. And is Eddie holding his hand? Left and the hand. And stepped on. Now he's reaching up for the shoulder. He gets New Orleans. He had 11 tackles, two sacks, and a couple of fumble recoveries. Take a look and see if we can see uh, number 73 making the initial hit. You know, I think it's more his shoulder because I didn't see anything happen to his hand, Charlie. He 
is in pain there on the sideline. We'll get a report. Second down and seven. Cincinnati leading by 14, 21 to 7. Glenn Collins is checked in the defensive line. Defect fires. Good pass. First down, 50 yard line to Franklin. And he spins to the 44 yard line in Cincinnati territory. So that may be the big play that Buffalo needed. They picked up a little over 20 yards. A good throw by Dufek. A good read and a good throw. Got a good, strong arm. I'm impressed with the young man. The line of scrimmage now, the Cincinnati 44 yard line. And last play good for a total of 19 yards officially. This is only the fifth NFL start for Joe Dufek in his second year out of Yale. Was a free agent with Seattle a year ago and then was cut loose and then picked up as a free agent by Buffalo. And the blitz is on and he is dropped. Reggie Williams got it. First sack for the Cincinnati defense. That is the ninth sack of the year for Reggie Williams. Reggie Williams is the big play man for the Bengals from the left side of your screen. 57, four short, 73 was responsible to get out there and put the block on him. Just didn't get out there quick enough. Of course, the speed and quickness of Williams was a factor in that sack. Loss of seven, second down and 17, six in the secondary for Cincinnati. Dufek's pass is complete to Booker Moore. He gets a little of it back. Cincinnati 46 yard line picks up five. It'll be third down and 12, and John Simmons makes the tackle for the Bengals. This is not a sellout crowd in Cincinnati. We mention that because we can tie it into the fact that that means that the second half of the doubleheader on NBC, only one game comes into a city according to the league contract when a team plays at home. That means that the Pittsburgh Rams game will be seen in Cincinnati. Of course, a big factor as far as Cincinnati is concerned, should the Bengals win today and they lead by 14 and the Steelers lose to the Raiders, then Cincinnati would be the champion. Dufak, a little pushy contest going on at the 29-yard line. The ball pops loose. Mitchell Brookins is the man who made the reception, and now a conference will be held. He may just rule it all incomplete and bring it back. Ray Griffin was there for Cincinnati. The pass is incomplete. Fourth down. It goes as an incompletion. Fourth down and 12 back at the Cincinnati 46-yard line. Just good tight coverage on the part of the Bengals. Ray Griffin right there. Brookins made a good effort to come back to the ball. Saw the ball, came back, had it in his hand. You'll see him right there. He sees it. I don't know if he ever had control of it. No, no I don't think did. he never did. Call. That's right. And that brings back Mr. Excitement as John Kidd will be kicking to Mike Martin, the leading punt returner. Well, he's going to stay away from it. His kicks will get further and further <laughs> away from Mike Martin. He kicked that ball 10, 15 yards <laughs> out of bounds. So the clock is stopped. 322 left to go in the first half. And the Bengals lead the Bills by 14 points. Back of the Buffalo Bills, Joe Dufek has completed 13 of 18 for 123 yards. He's looked pretty good. I'm impressed with him, Charlie. He hasn't made any big mistakes and he hasn't thrown the ball poorly. He has put the money, put the ball on the money most of the time, and it's not his fault that they're not scoring points. And the weather continues to get even nicer here in Cincinnati. <laughs> As you can see, the sun is out. Temperature now in the 70s. It is a gorgeous day. Well, it's a big surprise. And talking with Kenny Anderson earlier, he said two weeks ago they played the Seah Seahawks in the freezing rain. He'll take anything above 40. Anderson, a little wobbly pass, and he's incomplete at the 22-yard line. Charles Alexander, the intended receiver. I had the impression that there's a study in concentration. He wanted to go deep and then like changed his mind almost midway of the throw and tried to pull it down short. Well, he's been doing that all day, Charlie, and that's what I was alluding to a little bit earlier when I said 
Sizen has the ability, a lot of the skills that Kenny has lost some maybe, but, but Kenny has the experience. He reads deep to throw the ball deep down the field. If that's not open, he'll come back and dump it off short. The Sizen may have to learn that yet. Second and 10, 19 yard line, Cincinnati in their own territory. Charles Alexander. May give him a yard to the 20, but that'll be all. It'll be third down and nine. Ken Johnson was there to stop Charles Alexander. Now Buffalo, their last offensive possession, got a little, little offense going, but then they were stopped. They were stopped by the sack, turned in by Reggie Williams. Now Turn it around. If Buffalo can stop Cincinnati here, they could come up with pretty good field position. Well, Buffalo's defense needs to step forward here and stop them because the last two drives, Cincinnati has scored. Third down and nine. Ben Williams jumped offside. Pass is complete for the first down to the 30-yard line. So the Bengals will turn down the penalty. And the first down will stand. We'll take another look at it. Mike Martin pulled it in. Number 77 right there jumps offside. I can't tell you what that does to the confidence of not only the quarterback, but the offensive receivers when he sees that doing, going on. Because he knows he gets a free play. Just relax and complete the pass. Defense number 77. A penalty will be declined. It's first down. Injury report on Jim Hazard of the Buffalo Bills has a hit pointer, and he is out for the day. First down, Cincinnati, their own 30-yard line. Anderson just drops this one off to Holman. Holman is tied in sitting back at the little safety line. 33-yard line, second down and seventh. With the tackle, I had the feeling that they wanted it to be a screen, but it didn't look like a screen. It was a screen. It was one of those option screens where the quarterback has the option to throw the ball to the wide receiver downfield or dump it to his uh, tight end or his uh, back out in the flat. And one offensive or two offensive linemen will slip out there to help him. 21 to 7. That is the score. Cincinnati out in front. The two minute warning now being given to both benches here in Riverfront Stadium. Collinsworth and some of the other people that are banged up an opportunity to get well and they would then be playing in two weeks at Denver by the way congratulations to the Denver Broncos defeating Seattle in the kingdom tough assignment I was very impressed watching that ball game how well they played and uh, John Elway has come a long way in a year and a half and of course Dan Reese has done a good job with him the whole ball club played well Kind of sad from a personal note, though. We thought we might be in Denver for the wild card. We were looking forward to that. But they kind of messed that up for us. They're taking the week off. They've got the championship. So we'll have Seattle and the Raiders. Fight to be decided. Pass is the pick. Steve Kreider. First down. is hitting on all cylinders and they're getting the protection as they are Anderson can sit back there and just pick him apart this was probably the fourth or fifth receiver he had an option to throw the ball to coverage was downfield and he just dumps it off the ball just outside the 10 yard line first down and 10 this is the tenth play of the drive coming up started back at the 19 yard line it's a five touchdown bingo Strider, and that is Steve's first touchdown of the season. And Anderson has thrown for three. Seven to seven, Cincinnati. Here comes the extra point. Thirty-eight seconds left to go in the first half. Ryder to hold, Jim Breach to attempt. He's got it. Twenty-eight to seven. Kenny Anderson has now completed six 
16 of 20, 206 yards in the first half and three touchdowns. Not a bad day, let alone uh, one half. You see 42 Cush at the bottom faking the blitz. A little slant pattern, just down a few steps and slants to the inside. Catches the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. Take another look as Kenny fakes the play, turns around. The dangerous thing about turning your eye, eyes away from the secondary is you can't see the linebacker sometimes when you come back. Maybe your vision is blocked, but Kenny's been doing it so long, he knows where they are. Beginning of the telecast, you said the key for Cincinnati was an early lead. Well, they've got that, and the key for Buffalo would be motivation. They had it on their opening drive. When they move 77 yards in 11 plays and score their only seven points and go up seven nothing. But that's been it. They didn't sustain it. They had the motivation coming out. And then Cincinnati says, wait a minute, we're down seven to nothing. And I think Cincinnati has done exactly what they want to. They've come out, they've put some points on the board. Now on the other side of the field, the Bills, who've had a very frustrating long season, need to regroup and get their act together. And Cincinnati, their last four possessions have ended in seven points. Jim Breach will be kicking off to either Van Williams, Donald Wilson, or to be down in the end zone. He's really kicking well today. Van Williams, he'll run this one out. To the 10, pass to the 15 to 20. Nice little move, goes out of bounds at 25 yard line. He has 27 yards on the return, and John Simmons out of SMU was there for Cincinnati. 31 seconds left to go first half. You know, Charlie, some other people are watching this game with great interest, and that's the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're probably out warming up, getting ready to play the Raiders at this point. But it's got small television sets with us. Oh. I, I guarantee you, okay, from having been there a few times, you know. there is someone with a TV set in the training room or the, uh, the, uh, or the shower or somewhere. Of course, the showers aren't on, but they just want to make sure they know how the game's going. Question. How does that word always get around? It just seems like you know immediately the, after every the score. The equipment man or the assistant trainer, one of the assistant coaches, maybe the PR man. <laughs> they all know. Somebody get word to them. Dufek throws deep into coverage, knocked away. Good defensive play. Mitchell Brooklyn's the intended receiver, and Ray Griffin knocked it down. Flag was dropped. And the conference is being held. Clock is stopped with 26 seconds left to go. Chuck Eberling is the referee. Pass interference, number 81, offense. Offensive pass interference. Probably a good play by Brookins, Charlie, because from what I saw at the end of the play, it looked as though Griffin had a good opportunity to intercept it. You're right, he did. The great Griffin had position on it. So the penalty takes the ball back to the 16-yard line, and the down goes over. It'll be first down and 20, with 26 seconds left to go in the first half. Secondary for Cincinnati. The goal was a four man rush. Dufek goes deep and it is incomplete. He was going to Preston Denard. Jackson and Simmons picked up the cover. That was an opportunity, Charlie, for him to take a little bit more time. Joe Dufek not having had a lot of playing time. He could have taken a little bit more time because he had the time. I think we have a holding penalty, and that may be why he had, to, had as much time as he did. But he threw the ball a little bit too soon. He didn't have to throw it as soon. He could have given the receiver a little bit more time to get open. And with 20 seconds left to go in the first half, they'll take the penalty. Number 72 on the offense, first down. Buffalo is going to use all of their downs. So Cincinnati on any penalty type situation would take the penalty, keep pushing them back. 
split the distance to the eight yard line from the 16. The holding was on number 72 Ken Jones and that is one of the problems that the Bills have had this year a great amount of penalties a lot of holding penalties and it seems as though for the Bills they've come at the wrong times when a big play has been made really sets them back. Buffalo has been penalized 50 yards in the first half six times for 50 Cincinnati four for 20. Greg Bell the ball carrier. The clock continues to run so Buffalo may just decide with it. First down and 28 that you might as well let the clock wind its way to halftime. The ovation by the fans here in Riverfront Stadium for the Cincinnati Bengals. Cincinnati leading by a score of 28 to 7. And they've been very impressive in the first half. They have, Charlie. I think the only negative as far as the Bengals are concerned is the loss of Chris Collinsworth. He came out, he was playing very well. They were getting him the ball, and then he hurts the same ankle that he had coming into the ball game. It's a setback for him, but like we said, if they win this ball game, it's two weeks to the next ball game. And Kenny Anderson with a hot hand for the Cincinnati Bengals. It's halftime to score. Cincinnati 28 and Buffalo 7. <laughs> 